Hi, everybody. This is just in case I forget something, so I'm going to put it there. Um, uh, how's it going? That was a really good mix between good and woo! So, thanks to the woos and all of the goods. God, things are going well. Sorry if there's any confusion about you getting onto this floor today. There's no the room this large downstairs. Um, I have been having a really great VidCon. It's been really fantastic. I'm ha really, really happy right now. Um, so I make online video for a living, which is pretty cool, and I get to do that. Uh, but today, I want to say that differently. That's what I usually say when people ask me. Actually, when people ask me, I usually say, I make educational videos for teachers and students because that ends the conversation and then I didn't, don't have to spend 30 minutes explaining how YouTube ads work. Uh, but uh, today, for our purposes, I want to say that I think about online video for a living because that is what enables me to make online video for a living. There's this lie that I tell to people that I've been telling people for a long time, and I'm not really ashamed of this lie, uh, but the lie is that, I, that, that uh, this all happened by accident, and I was recently saying that to Fred Seibert, who, uh, who was on this stage last year, has really like, been on the cutting edge of all the cutting edges of media since cable started. Uh, he was early exec at MTV, and uh, uh, sort of brought Hanna-Barbera back and does, he's the Frederator Studios guy. He's amazing and he, I said, oh, it's just, you know, he's like, how did this happen? And I was like, oh, it's just like it happened. I don't know, it's like a thing happened. And he's like, BS, how did it happen? I hear people tell this lie all the time and I know it's a lie and so tell me the truth. And the truth is that everybody who does this, everybody who creates great video, everybody who develops an audience, is obsessed with it. And we're not obsessed with getting to a particular place. It's not like I said seven or eight years ago, like, boy, I sure do want to be standing on a stage in front of a bunch of people and like, I'm gonna, how am I gonna make that happen? It's much more of a day-to-day uh, -day obsession. And that is like the competitive advantage of the independent creator, that we can be obsessed in a way that n no media company can. Because everybody at the media company is like, well, I need to buy my food and I need to, uh, I need to make this work and I need to keep my job. But, but like independent creation is really about like unhealthy obsession with making a great thing, with building the audience, with, with trying to figure out how to make this something that you can be doing all the time and and really in a lot of ways it is kind of unhealthy and I, I look back and, at, and like think about the times that I've spent just staring at the ceiling not able to sleep because I'm worried about not becoming like becoming ir like unrelevant again and really how awful would that be I kind of sometimes wouldn't mind at all but um, but yeah it's it's a uh, that's the thing, and like in early online video, a lot of the competitive advantage was, was not being ashamed of your obsession with a thing that the whole world thought was kind of dumb. Uh, like YouTube, that's dumb. Like that was a lot, like for like four years, that's sort of the response I got. Um, but uh, so I wanna talk today about what the obsession has led me to be thinking about at, uh, at, at VidCon, uh, because this is the best time to be obsessed with online video because everybody's together talking about it. And the big conversation is about all the new platforms and that's both emerging platforms like Twitch and YouNow and Snapchat and Vine and established platforms like Twitter and Facebook getting into video and what that means for creators and what it means for the industry. My perspective is uh, that it's great. Uh, it's really exciting. And it's not, like, I don't feel like, it, what, one of the things that it has made me realize is the special things about YouTube, like what YouTube is really good at. Like, when you see these emerging things, like these new platforms doing this, it's like, well, they're doing something that YouTube isn't good at. And that's, that's great, thank goodness. But that highlights the stuff that YouTube is good at. And the big thing that YouTube is good at, and that I, like, it's so easy to forget is that in 2008 or 2009, they decided to just start sharing revenue, which is completely antithetical to the entire idea of the internet industry, which is supposed to be about like 90% profit margins, but YouTube just throws out 50% of its revenue before it even hits their bank account, giving it to us, which is like that. There's somebody who works for YouTube over there, started the clap. 
No, no, he, should, he, just, he did not. Uh, he does not work for YouTube. That's great. And, and that's such a fantastic thing. That really changed the culture of creation on the internet. It, and like it enabled such a powerful and strong creator community that we now he, have here in this room, that we have all over the place at VidCon and all over the world on every continent, probably not Antarctica, but maybe there's somebody at McMurdo who makes online video. Probably there is. I should check that so that I can say that and not have to talk about it for 30 seconds afterward. The, uh, so YouTube is great, especially the fact that there, it's, a, it's a platform that you sort of like, if you have a successful video, you, it's like inevitably monetized. It just like they want to monetize it and they want to send you a check and then like, oh, thanks for the check, YouTube. And uh, you know, Twitter doesn't send you a check. Twitter has a lot of people making a lot of content for them and then, then they're worth a lot of money because of the content that we create for them, but nobody ever gets a cut of that. Facebook makes you pay to share your stuff uh, with your audience. It's like, oh, do you have an audience on Facebook? Good. Do you want to reach them? That'll be $12. Uh, Facebook uh, is now the second large company, though, that has launched a pilot program for sharing money with creators on the platform. That took a long time from like YouTube doing it to another large platform doing it. And I'm really proud and happy that YouTube did that because boy, it sure did do a lot of great stuff for us. Now, the other question is, what, what, does, what do these new platforms mean for independent creators and for the ecosystem? I think it's probably good for YouTube. I'm not going to get into why, but because this isn't about YouTube, this is about creators. It's definitely good for creators because it's not about like which platform am I going to choose. It's about I have a diversity of options and I can pick one or two or three and these are going to be the ways that I build my audience. These are going to be the ways that I make. And that's so exciting to have those other opportunities because when people say to me, how do you get popular on YouTube? I say, you got to go back to 2007 because that's the only way I know how to do it. I could never get popular on YouTube today. Look at me. <laughs> but these other platforms, Twitch and YouNow and Vine, these look like YouTube in 2007 or 2010. Like these are platforms that people need to be obsessed with and people are getting obsessed with and that allows you to look at this and say, what is interesting about this platform? What's different? And how can I create for that platform in a way that is like content that is specifically for that place? And you can ask that question about Vine. You can also ask about Facebook and Twitter. Like, I'm not going to just throw a YouTube video up on, on Twitter. That doesn't make sense. You need to create content differently for different platforms for what those platforms are good at. And I've loved seeing people get obsessed with Twitch TV. How do we make things that are specific for this platform? And it's so, like, I could never do that. I have a company now. I have to be obsessed with YouTube. I can't, I can't be obsessed with everything. And so you have all these independent creators coming in and doing really fascinating things that I never would have expected with these new platforms. And it's because they believe in the power of that thing. They become obsessed with something that everyone else thinks is like, oh, Twitch TV, that's kind of dumb. So you got to be obsessed with the thing that everybody else is thinking is dumb. I am so inspired by the creators now that are not me. I often find myself hearing new creators, young people, old people saying fascinating things, and I'm just like, you know, I kind of feel like maybe I should just go and you guys can have it because this is such an exciting time and that, con and that platform diversity creates a diversity of creators and that what we see then is that is a force against the consolidation that media has inevitably tended toward for the last you know, 100 years where every opportunity we have, uh, you know, because it's sort of inevitable that the person with the most subscribers gets the most subscribers, who gets the most subscribers, and then you have those. But when you have these new platforms that are like start out entirely level, those are the places where independent creators can get discovered. That's a force against that consolidation, and that's such a great thing for the independent creator. And I'm really proud to be a part of it, and I'm really glad to be seeing it here at VidCon. Um, and that is the thing that I wanted to say to you all today. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your insights and your thoughts and your, your enthusiasm with each other and with us uh, as people at VidCon.